and brought a Peter with tidbits from the Word. To read is one thing, and it's a good thing. To study is a great thing. With diligence, it is a blessed thing. I read a lot. I've sat here today and read and read and read. I've studied two or three books already uh, today, small books, and looked at things. And I come across this man called Elisha. What a blessed thing to be a man in the good graces of God. I don't suspect that any one of us ever would come to the place Elijah did in his life. And uh, he did 18 exciting events. And if you've got a, a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil or a pad and you sit down, I'm going to give you a, a synopsis of those 18 things. And you look them up. I'm going to give you the uh, verses where they are. And you look them up. He parted the waters of the Jordan. This is a man like you and me. But giving himself to God, there's a difference. There's a big difference in following God or saying you follow God. Uh, one of the dividing, dividing lines today as has people, uh, human beings, that say we love God, yet on Sunday we turn our television on football. You say, Brother Peter, would you not watch football? I wouldn't if it kept me from going to church on Sunday night. What you put before God becomes your God. And if football is going to be your God, that's what you're going to talk about. That's what you're going to know all about. You're going to know teams. You're going to know all kinds of stuff. You're going, to know, you're going to know more about football than you know about God. If you would get in the Bible and learn more about God, you want to see a quarterback. You want to see a real quarterback. Look at Elijah. Elisha, excuse me. Look at Elisha. This is a real quarterback for God. He parted the water of the Jordan, 2 Kings 2.14. He purified the water at Jericho, 2 Kings 2, 19-22. Do you know how important the water is? Uh, do you know that the Jordan River, I've been there to it, it it's uh, like most rivers that flow through cities and towns and across states, like the Mississippi, it's not quite as mighty as the Mississippi, but it is pretty mighty. Uh, we have a river in Georgia that's uh, called the Chattahoochee that's a comparison for that river. And he purified that water at Jericho. That was a, an absolute necessity that that water be drinkable, that he could use it, they could use it. Uh, he judges some hoodlums at Bethel, 2 Kings uh, 2, 23 and 24. <laughs> that is a very, very, very interesting story. You'll love it. If you'll get there and read it, you'll love it. The way he run a bunch of little old children came after him. I don't think there was so much little as so whatever, but in, and then he created the oil in the empty vessel, 2 Kings uh, 4, 1 through 7. The little old lady had nothing. And he said, you feed me first. She said, but I only have enough for my son and I to eat one time, then we're going to sit and die. He said, bake me a cake first. And she did. And her barrel of oil never ceased after that. And her barrel of flour. <laughs> wow. This is one man in God. Wow. Look at this. He raised a dead boy of 
Shunem, 2 Kings 4, 18 through 21, 32 through 37. Wow, that is really something. The seventh thing he did, purifying a poisonous stew at Gilgal. Somebody had thrown something in the stew. That if they had ate it, it would have killed them all. There was poison in the stew. Second Kings 4, 38 to 41. If you look at that story and you read it, this may be the last stew they had. This may be uh, we were going to eat and die. Ah, uh, and by the way, in that day, people got to the place to where they had to eat or die. And so, and then you got number eight is a feeding of a hundred men by supernatural increasing twenty loaves of bread and a sack of corn. This is a picture of Jesus feeding the thousands. And, and here's a man God has used uh, in the Old Testament to do a miracle like that in 2 Kings 4, 42 through 44. And then we come to uh, predicting the judgment of leprosy upon Gehazi, 2 Kings 5, 15 through 27. And... Uh, he, this, <laughs> this, this is one powerful servant of God. I'm here to tell you. 11. Recovering a lost axe head from the Jordan. 2 Kings 6, 1 through 7. Remember, he had borrowed the axe. No, he didn't borrow the axe. Somebody else did. And they were swinging the axe, and the head came off it and went in the water. And Elijah caused it to float and come back up. I know the stories. <laughs> well, it fell on a turtle and the turtle came up and brought the axe head up. We don't know how the axe head came up and floated, but it came up and floated. The twelfth thing revealed in the secret war plans of Syria to Israel. 2 Kings 6, 8-12. God gave this man, Elijah, a ability to see what God wanted him to see, when he wanted him to see it. And the 13th thing, he prayed that his servant would see an invisible angelic army. 2 Kings 6, 13-17. That's probably the one we'll come back to uh, today. But right now I've got to get through the list so that you'll have it all before time runs out. And this is a one that I really, really, really uh, like. And then uh, we see we see a <coughs> 14. Blinding the entire Syrian army. <laughs> one man and God. One man and God. One man and God. Why can't that be today? Why can't that be today? This is Old Testament. This is before the Holy Spirit came and indwelt a man totally all the time. But Because I do believe this man, Elisha, was indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has an all-seeing eye. Every situation that is out there comes against, that comes toward a man or is out there, the all-seeing eye of the Holy Spirit sees it. Blinding the Syrian army. Wow. 15 was the deliverance of the starving citizens of Samaria. He promised them deliverance. And they got it too. <laughs> uh, 2 Kings 6, 24 and 7 through 20. 
predicted the death of Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, and the subsequent reign of Hazel over Syria. 2 Kings 8, 7 through 15. By the way, there was not one prediction, not one thing that Elisha said or did that did not come true. It all came true. Uh, he predict, predicted three victories by Israel over Syria. 2 Kings 13, 14 through 19. Even though they would have victory over Syria, Syria wouldn't quit. They'd get victory, Syria wouldn't quit. They'd get victory, Syria wouldn't quit. It was the ISIS of the Old Testament, if you please. They just kept coming. And then uh, 18, raising a dead man years after Elisha himself had died. 2 Kings 13, 20 through 21. This is a, uh, a historical run through real quick of the things that Elisha did and, uh, in 2 Kings. Now, God used different people for different things. He used Elisha like this. He used Moses with a rod, just a rod in his hand, a wooden stick rod. It was Aaron's rod, and it was a priestly rod. It wasn't just any rod. It was a rod used in the, the temple. It was a rod used by Aaron. He used David's sling in 1 Samuel to kill Goliath. Uh, David had such a shot with a sling that he could penetrate a, a spot. Uh, some people think it was right here at the temple there was a little space in the arm of the man and David hit that or right here in the center there was a little spot and David slung that rock in that spot. He used Gideon's trumpet Wow, man, that is some story. Judges 7 and 18. You want to read a good story, you read that one. Where Gideon blew that trumpet. And, and they broke those lanterns and all those people down in that valley that were there camped to come kill them uh, jumped out of bed. It was uh, just before daylight, probably in the morning, 2 3 o'clock in the morning. And they said, the Israelites are upon us, the Israelites are upon us, and they killed each other. <laughs> wow. He used that widow's handful of meal, remember, with Elisha over there. He took the little boy's lunch in John 6, 9 through 11. That little boy's lunch of a, some little bread and fishes and fed 5,000. The raising of the dead boy at Shunem. And, and this was something Elijah did. We've got... Some things Elisha said to King Ahab. This, uh, excuse me. Forgive me. I backed up. And I was, I, I had a brain, a brain uh, lapse here. I got Elijah. Remember, Elisha came after Elijah. Elijah is E L I J A H. That's Elijah. Elisha is E L I S H A. And what I just did is I had studied Elijah and I went back into Elijah's miracles instead of staying in Elisha's, and I backed up. So I need to be careful I don't do that. Uh, okay, Hazel and, Ju and uh, Jehu were ordered by God to be performed by Elijah. But for some reason, he did not accomplish this. And again, 
on that with using Elijah. These two guys, Elisha said, when Elijah left, he said, I want you to give me the mantle that you carry. I want to be able, I want to have it. And he said, if you're here, when I go, I will drop the mantle on you. And you will be able, <clears throat> and you will be in my place then. And he was. And I'd have to go right back over. I, I, I actually have, to be honest with you, studying several things uh, you can get out of whack. And I have. All right, okay. Elijah was the one that raised the widow's boy. Elijah <coughs> was the one that, that uh, <laughs> came against the priest of Baal. Look at that in now. Uh, 18, now Kings 18, 25 through 40. Uh, Elijah and God, 19, 1 through 18. Uh, Elijah and Elisha, and that's going to be in 1 Kings. Uh, calling him to special service, 19 and 19 through 21. That's what I really wanted to get to. And I've got to get back over there into 1 Kings uh, 19, 20 to 21. Okay, let's see where we are right here. 6, 9, 11, 14. Uh, you need to have a Bible if you're going to follow Brother Peter. Elijah flees from Jeze Jezebel. Oh my goodness. This man that just had fought a great war, just had done great and great miracles. This crazy woman said, I'm going to have your head before nightfall. <laughs> uh, and Elijah said unto Ahab, in verse 41 of chapter 18, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and, and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again. Seven times he did this. Seven times. You remember naming dipping seven times? You remember that the word the ver that seven is a, a biblical number uh, for completion, and eight is new beginnings. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, "Behold, there arise a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand." <laughs> And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariots, and get thee down, and the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass, in the meanwhile, that the heavens was blocked with clouds and winds, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded him up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. This is a man running before a man with chariots and horses. He, he's running before a man with chariots and horses. This is some man. This is a specimen. This is a, a, a real specimen of a human being. Uh, that could do this. And, and then, uh, after Ahab had told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all, how he had slain all the prophets with a sword, uh, boy, you need to go back and read the story. He called all the prophets of Baal together. This is one man. This is one one horrendous man. And he calls these prophets together and and challenges them 
challenges them to uh, do something with their God, all of them. And uh, so they all come together, hundreds of them, and, and, uh, and okay. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah, by the word of the Lord unto Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar of burnt incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord, and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, uh, Josiah, by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and the man's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar of Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him, and his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up, so that he could not pull it in again to him. And the altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Listen. Do you live by the word of the Lord? I wish I could say, yes, I do. But that would be like the preacher saying the other night in church. Is there one here without sin? Would you raise your hand? Big congregation. No hand was raised. The only way we're without sin is in the soul. This body was sowed in sin and it will, it will fight righteousness to the end. And it will <coughs> always try to do something because of the temptation of the devil did with Eve. He's still doing it. And he's still doing it the same exact way. <coughs> he tempted her with a sight. It looked good to eat. So she, she desired it because it looked good. She looked at it. The beginning of going away from God, looking at something. The altar was also rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, uh, concerning the sign which the man of God had given the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored to me again. And the man of God brought the Lord, besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him again, and began as it was before. See, he caused the man by a statement to have a leprosy hand, and then he caused the man by a statement for his hand to be restored. That kind of power <coughs> is not found today. Even though today we're in a, a different world. And we need to, <coughs> I got me up. <coughs> Some dust in my throat, I reckon. <coughs> and then the king said unto the man of God, come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. The man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go with thee. We're talking about one man with God. This prophet had a problem. He had all of this power that God gave him. And yet he failed. Listen to this. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so was it charged me 
by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou comest. He went another way, and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Now there dwelt there an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, and the words which he had spoken unto the king. Then they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen that way, the, his sons had seen the way the man had gone, the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said to his sons, Saddle my ass, so that I can uh, uh, ride thereupon. And he rode thereupon and went after the man of God and found him, sitting under an oak tree, and said unto him, Art thou the man of God that cometh from Judah? And by the way, that is an interesting point right there that he came from Judah and he said I am and then he said unto him come home with me and eat bread and he said I may not return with thee nor go in with thee neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place for it was said to me by the word of the Lord listen now when the word of the Lord says something to you you better listen to it you better listen to it Ah, you say, Brother Peter, have you had God speak audibly to you? No, but I have had him give me an impression good enough to know, do not go that way. And the Lord shall uh, no bread or drink water in this place. And he said unto him, I am a prophet, also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee. And, and thine house that he may eat bread and drink water but he lied to him I tell you what whether he saw if he saw an angel it wasn't an angel the Lord go to heaven uh, the devil has angels and he could appear the guy but the guy lied to him here and so he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drank now we see the judgment coming on the prophet. And it came to pass in verse 20, as he sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou host dis disobey, hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment, which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but comest back and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place of which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water. Thou uh, carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. In that day, the, the most important thing and the finality of the life of a man was that his bones would be placed with his father's bones and his mother's bones and his brother's bones and his grandmother's and grandfather's bones. All their bones would be placed in the same sepulchre. That was the most important thing to those folks in that day. And it came to pass that after he had eaten the bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom had brought him back brought back and when he was gone a lion met him by the way and slew him and his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by it and the lion also stood by the carcass and behold men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it to the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord 
Therefore the Lord hath delivered him unto the lion, which hath torn him and slain him, according to the word of the Lord which he spake unto him. And he spake to his son, saying, Saddle me an ass, and thy saddle they saddle him. And he went and found the carcass, and cast in the way, and the ass, and the lion standing by the carcass. And the lion had not eaten the carcass, nor torn the ass. And the prophet took out the carcass of the man of God, laid it upon his ass, and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. And he laid his carcass in his own grave, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. And it came to pass after he had buried him that he spake to his son, saying, When I am dead, then bury me in the sepulchre wherein the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the saying which he cried by the word of the Lord against the altar of Bethel and against all the houses of the high places which are in the city of Samaria shall surely come to pass. If you go back <clears throat> and read 1 Kings all the way through, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful book. Beautiful stories. Beautiful book. And they're not just stories. They're true pictures of people that lived and what they did and how they did it. Oh, if you or I could get as close to God as those folks did. If we could get that close to God. But you see, these were two prophets of God. One disobeyed. One lied and caused the other to disobey. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful who turns you from the path you're on. Uh, you can be on the path of God, in, in the center of God's will, and another man come and turn you from that path and take you away. The end is not going to be pretty. The end is not going to be pretty. Just like the end of that man wasn't pretty. This was a man with enough power. God could have used him for years to come. But disobedience was not tolerated. And the disobedience directly to God was not tolerated. And he's not going to tolerate it for you and I either. If he says to you, don't do something anymore, don't do it. I would be dead in the grave right now had I not quit smoking. When God told me to quit smoking, I quit smoking. It took me a year of fighting. I, the last cigarette I ever lit, I about fainted dead. And God showed me. He said, I don't care where you hide, where you go, I'm there. So you can go out behind the barn if you want to light that cigarette. I'm out here too. I'm everywhere that you are. If I'm in you and you're in me, then I'm there. And I know when you light that cigarette. And it, and it, and it is against my spirit. So don't do it. And so I, I had that battle, and I won, won it by the victory of God, not by my victory. Well, our time has come and gone. We will see you next time, right? Bye-bye.